In the head-to-head -head series, I show you two different patients with two different diseases, but similar radiologic appearances. This one was suggested by Frank when he was here with us for a month. Here's patient one. This is the mass in question. And you can see it here on a coronal reformat. As promised, it is pre-styloid. Here's patient two. Pretty similar appearance. Here's the mass. Right? There it is on the coronal. Pretty similar, but subtly different. So here they are, right next to each other, patient one and patient two. See if you can figure out what the difference is between these two patients' pathology. Now would be a good time to pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, both patient one and patient two have lesions that are replacing the parapharyngeal fat. Here's the normal parapharyngeal fat on the left side, and here is the mass replacing or displacing it on the right. This one is a little more directly pre-styloid. This one's a little more medial. That I don't think is a big difference. Uh, in these two in the way that it is displacing the parapharyngeal fat. But there is a big difference in its relationship to the deep lobe of the parotid. Remember that the deep lobe of the parotid is the portion of the parotid that extends medial to the facial nerve. It's this part of the parotid. Notice on patient two, the mass is indistinguishable or inseparable from the deep lobe of the parotid. Whereas in patient one, there is a plane that separates the mass from the underlying gland. The other important thing to notice is that here, the parapharyngeal fat has been replaced but still goes all the way around the mass. Whereas on this side, the parapharyngeal fat has been displaced. It goes more forward than it does on the contralateral side. These patients both have pleomorphic adenomas, but they arose from different sites. In this situation, this is an exophytic pleomorphic adenoma coming off of the deep lobe of the parotid and displacing the parapharyngeal fat. In patient one, this pleomorphic adenoma arose from rests of salivary tissue within the parapharyngeal fat and is displacing the parapharyngeal fat in all directions. It is separable from the underlying gland. This distinction is important because it can affect the way that surgery is performed. If the mass is attached to the parotid gland, you have to do an external approach and isolate the facial nerve to ensure that it is safe. Any operation on the parotid gland, that needs to be a priority. Whereas with an ectopic lesion that isn't actually part of the gland, you could take a transoral approach to resect it. Now, many surgeons may still choose to do a lateral approach and go through the parotid gland or around the parotid gland, um, but at least the oral approach is an option when you are dealing with an ectopic pleomorphic adenoma, not when you are dealing with an exophytic pleomorphic adenoma.